Teresa, are you ready? I'm really ready. Sister Brent, are you ready? We're ready. All right, it's time I'm for ready. a cup of soul, where wisdom is dropped, truth is shared, and there's enough love for a second helping. And that second helping is for you. And you, and you, and you. <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome back to another episode of Cup of Soul. And as Candace says, where wisdom is dropped. And I am so excited tonight for some wisdom to be dropped um, in this episode. Um, who's ready? I got some voices. I have more voices today. Yes. Yes. I got some sisters with us tonight on this cup of soul, which I am so excited about. But I'll share who they are in just a minute. But first, I want to thank you for joining in. I want to thank you for um, listening and also sharing the podcast and helping us share um, an encouraging message um, that God has brought to us. Uh, we have been in the study of faith, walking by faith by um, walking by faith, not by sight. And it has been some amazing episodes of um, just faith talking. And even, I feel like we've grown in our faith and understanding faith more. And um, that is the gift that we have from the Lord. So what I'm excited about is that some sister friends are joining us. It is five of us tonight. And I just feel like this cup and it's just full of wisdom that is just going to be dropped tonight so grab your paper grab your pen we're going to drop some scriptures songs so get ready so get ready um as um we jump into it we're going to give it back to candace so that she can share her fun and see what kind of questions she's got for us this week that all of you get to answer <laughs> all right they're pretty Simple questions. I went. I went easy on the group. So you're going on a retreat. What are your three must-haves that you're taking with you, and not including the Bible? We're all saved. We got your Bibles, okay? <laughs> what are the three things you are taking with you? I gotta have my lipstick. Okay, that's one. My my contacts because I can't right. see without them. And. My meds. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, who's next? Elsa. Um, I'm with Gloria. I got to take my lipstick. Lipstick is a must. That's an essential. That's worse than a mask. You know, even through COVID, <laughs> it was like my lipstick. <laughs> um, My lipstick... Um. What else? Um, well, three essentials for sure would be my lipstick, um, my jewelry, and my glasses. All right. Okay, Joey. I am going to say, like the ladies, I want lip gloss. Don't have to have lipstick, but lip gloss. Um, I also need my medicine. And can I take my husband? Ooh, I like I mean, that. Mm. I didn't say what kind of retreat it was, so yes, yes, you can. You can take your husband. That's fair. Oh, okay. That's fair. I like the rest. Right, that's fair. Hey, we didn't specify the kind of retreat, so it's fair game. Fair game. Okay. Gloria's going on a women's retreat. <laughs> no. she said, Take I a need rest. some R and R. I need to shut down. I need life to shut down. That's it. I love it. I love it. Teresa, what are you taking? I think mean, I mean, we've done this one before. I don't, yes, I think we have. But it's funny, like you get a certain age, you be talking about your medicine. Yeah, I gotta have my medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that age is, but gotta have my medicine. Um I, yes, I'm supposed to be ready, right? Um, yes. 
I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring my favorite mug because I'm gonna make sure there's some good coffee. No creamer. I'm gonna bring creamer. I'm a, a mug slash creamer. They're together, and I like my blanket. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I like it. I'm gonna bring. I need my glasses. I'm with you. I can't. I otherwise you gotta leave me home. Can't see nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, mine would be my pillow because I like a, a certain pillow, and I'm gonna bring. My phone, but not for the phone. I need my, I want my audible so I can listen to my books. Mm. So I don't want to do anything on the phone. I just want to be able to listen to all my books. It's, my like husband's that. not coming with me. No. <laughs> I left him at home. I left him at home. All yeah. right. Next question. Is there, this is how you, I mean, people have lost family members over this one. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Oh, no. Elsa? I would say yes. I thought we were ever minus. Joey? We are. Yes, I can do yes. that. <laughs> Teresa? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Gloria, I am with you 100%. It absolutely does not belong on pizza. Two against, I mean, three against two. Oh. <laughs> it's like asking, does cheese belong on a hamburger or... No, it belongs on a on a sandwich, a cheese, a grilled cheese sandwich. That's it. I don't know. I don't like cheese on a burger. Oh, oh, no, you can make. I just it. think hot fruit is weird. Yeah, hot fruit. <laughs> uh, we yeah. won't even go. We're not even going. There. All right, three against two. All right, all right. I still love you guys. We're well, still well, friends. And Gloria don't even eat cheese on a hamburger. We got to have a talk. Uh, right? Now, not she is. Uh, Jesus loves her as she is. It's okay. She yeah. will. We will pray for her. <laughs> but I like mac and cheese, and I'll eat a grilled cheese sandwich, but it does not belong on a burger. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. Pray for me. <laughs> she said pray for me. And then the last one is, what is your worship song this week? Okay. Is there a song that you have on repeat? Mine has been Holy have- Ground. Okay. I'm trying Wait. to think the name of it. I know it's um, the Lauren Daigle one. I can't think of the name of it. Like, I want to start crying when I think about it. It's just, God, I've had a little bit of rough over a couple of days, so. Um, What's the lyrics? It talks about hold me when I, when I, when I don't even need, when I know, when I forget that I need you. You're there. Um, I can't even think right now. I went blank. Um, hold, hold on to me. Hold on, hold on to me. Yes, hold on to me when I forget I need you. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. Beautiful song. Mm-hmm. Yes, hold on to me is what it's called. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good song, especially when you've been holding on to a lot of stuff that you don't let go of, and that just brings it all out. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't do that because we Christians. <laughs> right. I'm not thinking, um, oh, go ahead. oh, sorry, Joey. Um, same Grace. Mm-hmm. Who's it by? William Murphy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, she yeah. could sing the ABCs and it would sound Girl, like he had taken heaven on earth. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> oh. Mm. Mine has been Gyra, mm. and that's by Elevation. Mm. Nice. Um, mine is Available by Elevation, nice. and it's just the lyric about just use me. You've called me. Take me. I'm going to follow. It was just, especially with, with our verses this month, I was like, oh, you're talking to my heart. Talking to my heart. Nice. All right, those are the three questions. You did it. I love it. I love that. I love that Gloria and Elsa need lipstick because that is the truth. They never leave home without it. And Gloria <laughs> likes red. Like Gloria likes red. And and I would say Elsa wears like a plumish prune mauvey yes. color all the time. Yes. Like I'll yes. never leave home without it. So that is the real truth. And Joy gonna bring my brother. So we gotta think about this retreat. Okay. <laughs> 
That is a holy sanctified retreat. Oh, it is. It is. (laughs) It is. It's going to be a good time, though. Um, So my question comes in and is this. um, I like mugs, okay? So did you get a mug this week? Anybody get a mug? My husband bought me one, but I forgot to bring it with me in the car. Do you know what it says on it? Um, coffee and um, something about coffee and Jesus. Okay. Uh, starting the starting the morning with coffee and Jesus is the only way to go, or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's an awesome husband. Got you a mug. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joey, did you get a mug? Are you a mug guru, collector, junk collector? <laughs> I am not, but just for you, I went and I got one that I already had, mm-hmm. and it says, women always land on their feet. Oh, and his shoes? Nice. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's nice. That's cute. Like that. You know what? Yeah. My address is P.O. Box 2872. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the mail. <laughs> that is cute, especially the heels. I like that. Yes. I like that. All right, Elsa, what you got up there? I got a mug and it has a little spoon and it says coffee. Christ offers forgiveness for everyone everywhere. Nice. P.O. Box 2872, Spring Valley, California. (laughs) That is cute. for coffee. It is. It is. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever seen that one. I know. On a mug, yes. But I've seen it on a, you know, like a... (laughs) A picture image on uh, Facebook before. When I saw it, yeah. I said, "Oh yes, I got yes. I got one for two for Monday." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I like coffee mugs with a little spoon and also with the lids. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For my tea. Mm-hmm. All right, Candace. It did. I finally bought a mug. It's been like a month straight, and I put my sticker on it. It is. Look at it. And yes. it look it looks like it's heavy, but it's not. It's mm. so light and it's shiny. Walmart, three dollars. Nice. Woo-hoo. So you made you one and it says empowered women empower women sticker on it. It's nice. perfect. Nice. Uh, and guess perfect. what? I didn't get a mug. Wow. <laughs> Cause I really don't have room for mugs. So. <laughs> this is true. At least she knows. That's <laughs> like it. I just really it's I think that I look. So let me just put that. Out. I do intentionally look, but stores are not having any good. So I would have to go on Etsy. There was one I saw. I really wanted, but I can't find it. I saw it on Instagram. So I went on this hunt, but it's not out anymore. But I don't, I didn't get one out of all of us. I didn't get one, but I gave y'all my addresses. So, you know, there we are. <laughs> um, hint, hint. hint, hint, right? All right, so we're going to jump into the fun part, and it is our episode. And, um, yes, we have some amazing women here with us, and I've invited them to join in uh, this episode and share their story. And we're calling this the Hall of Faithers, that we've, we are just like the ones, the Hall of Faithers in the Bible in Hebrews 11. Um, we've walked it out, not that we're finishing this journey, but our stories... Um, are about faith and how God has worked in our lives. And so I'm going to give you a little introduction of them and and who they are to me. Uh, I'm going to start with Elsa. Elsa was on last week with us. Um, Elsa's been a friend for many years. I did ministry with her, and we were high and by for about 12 years, honestly. We'd say hello and literally did not talk to each other every time we're at the leaders' meeting. But um, we'd all sometimes end up with the same clothes on. But I always had this smile and say hello. And I think during COVID, it really brought us together. Um, So Elsa's joining me tonight, uh, along with my partner in crime, which is Candace. Candace is here. Um, And then I have my brother's wife who is joining us. Her name is Joey. Joey is in North Carolina. And like I said, um, she is my brother's wife. Um, a sweet addition to the family because I didn't have a sister. So God has blessed me with one along with many other, but she's a dear because she is married to my brother. So thank you, Joy, for being here. And then I have Gloria. Um, Gloria, I met Gloria 
Gloria tends, used to tend, she left us. So, let me put that in there. She left our church and she goes to another local church in the community. But um, Gloria and I um, did ministry together for many years, served at the same church. And um, I think Gloria always wrote me into making a whole lot of turkeys. And one time she wrote me into making, um, I think it was chili, and I couldn't even get it to the church in the pot because it was so big. Um, and Gloria has an amazing ministry um, that she led, was feeding the homeless in a local town here. And so me and Gloria have gone to church for years um, and always been a blessing. I don't think we ever did ministry together, together. I, we just have served alongside of each other for many years. So yeah, that's, that's who it is. We got Elsa, Joey, and Gloria, I'm going to jack up everybody's names now, and Candace joining us tonight. So just welcome them, and let's jump in. Like I said, grab some paper and pencil, and here we go. Um, before I start, I'm going to pray us in, um, and then we'll jump in. Father God, I thank you for a new week, Lord, that we get to come together. I thank you, Lord, for um, the stories that's going to be shared tonight, and I thank you, Lord, for... Um, these amazing women that I get to do life with, that you've brought into my life, Lord. And Lord, as they share their stories, I just, I pray blessings over them. Um, I pray the Holy Spirit speaks through them. And whomever's listening, Lord, I pray that ears and eyes and souls are open to you, Lord. And I thank you again for this opportunity. And Lord, um, let us fill cups up with wisdom. You've given us wisdom and it's abundant and we want to share it. So thank you so much for the opportunity. I pray for those who are listening tonight. May they have a supernatural experience in listening to this podcast. And again, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for every home, every space, every car, every workspace that it is listened to, Lord. May this be a gospel that is shared in many places. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, so tonight, as uh, we start off, we are the Hall of Faithers. And um, it is a blessing to be here. And again, thank you, ladies, for joining us. Uh, we're talking mm -hmm. about the Hall of Faithers. And um, we have been in a series, as I shared before, uh, where we've been talking about faith and, and being our faith walk and Hebrews um, 11, where it speaks about faith. And so we're going to jump in. Last week, we um, talked about really like almost like blocking our faith and um, and how we all can hit that part of where we, um, how, how was it put, Candace? We kind of not necessarily blocking your faith, but not using the gift that we have. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And we've all been there. We literally have all been in a place where we didn't use the faith that literally is a gift. And I don't think anybody ever shared with us we have that gift. Um, I want to read Hebrews 11 to you before we start. And... You have to learn your ABCs when you're doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I'm going to start with one, and I'm in the New King James Version. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For it is the elders atta attained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And then it goes on down and we hit Noah, we hit Abraham, uh, we hit Sarah's story, um, and we hit um, Joseph's story, Isaac's story, Jacob's story. Isaac was blessed by Jacob and Enoch concerning things of coming. Um, Jacob was, was dying. He was blessed each of his sons. Joseph, when he was dying, was mentioned on the departure of his children. You have Moses um, and so on and so on. So many. And then if I think about it, if we bring it to our time, I have Elsa's story. I have Joey's story and I have Gloria's story of of 
faith and walking it out, literally walking by faith and not by sight. And um, so I want to ask you the first question, What was which I had sent out questions so they could be ready and prepared. But I want to ask the first question, what hero of faith um, really in the book of Hebrews 11 is your favorite when you hear the story? Elsie, we'll start with you. Mine is Abraham. Okay. Abraham. And what about his story? Um, did you learn from it? What can? What did you pull from Abraham's story? Um, from Abraham, he just, he believed and he demonstrated in God's promises. I mean, he didn't ask, he didn't waver. He just believed and he left something that was very familiar to him to something that he had no idea where he was going. Mm -hmm. So that is, to me, that's courageous. Mm. That's, I mean, that's big. Not anybody can do that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but he was confident that God would keep his promises mm -hmm. because God told him, I'm going to take you some place where you're going to it's going to be big and it's, it's you're going to be blessed your legacy your family mm -hmm. your you know your offspring and so and then he had to offer an offering along the way that mm -hmm. came after right mm -hmm. so it's along his journey there was so many other things that were put on him but he was on this journey that he wasn't going to look back and he wasn't going to um question what was ahead he mm -hmm. just knew that god was leading him and he was in good hands right. so that was that was my hero that's my hero mm -hmm. yeah yeah joy who's yours Mine was Abraham also, mm -hmm. um, for the same reasons. Um, and also thinking about Abraham, um, when he had to leave him being 75 years old, mm -hmm. when that happened, mm -hmm. I can't imagine at 75 years old, somebody telling me or for God told me you have to leave, go to a foreign place. Um, and you have to have that faith to know that things are going to work out and you leave everything, you know, right. um, I'm 46 and I can't imagine somebody telling me that now that I have to <laughs> and go do something. Um, right. So I think um, with Isaac, you know, relaying or I guess relating my life back to that, having a son, I just don't know that I could do that. Um, and I sit and ask myself, you know, if God came and told me that, would I really be able to do it? Um, even though I know that the whole point was for him to offer his son he didn't have to sacrifice him. He had to offer him. But I honestly don't know that I could do that. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Candace, who's your hero? Um, I would say in Hebrews, it would probably be Noah. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because he, all he, whenever Noah was talked about, it's like, oh, he just built the ark. But there was so many, it was so specific. It was so intentional. Like he, God gave him the vision and completion of what to do from the measurements to the height. And Noah had to build it in faith and he was mocked and he was ridiculed, but he, he took it knowing where his instructions were coming from. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like that was so cool. You know, it, yes, he did actually build the ark, but the conversations and the relationship that he had with God during the process of it, and he literally built a boat when there was no water. Like, yeah. we we forget that. Like, mm -hmm. there was nothing around him to even talk about walking by faith, not by sight. There wasn't even a cloud in the sky as he's building this ark. And he did it, no hesitation. God mm -hmm. said it, he moved. Yes. And it's, and then to see the, how the rest of the story transpires, transpires and just Noah's role in that. I'm like, I want, I want faith like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but he had YouTube to tell him how to build it. Right. And he was talented. <laughs> right. I can barely put together an Ikea shelf without being almost crying. Like, right. ah. yeah, those pieces don't go on. Let's put that up. Right. Extra parts that I just know. <laughs> they didn't need it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Glory, who's your hero? I'm going with the ladies, Elsa and Joey. I Abraham is my man just because 
Um, again, when we talked about the faith that he had, he just walked in faith, knowing that God was going to provide. God was not going to leave him nor forsake him. Right. He just put all his trust in him. And just like Joey said, the sacrifice comes along with that. I've asked myself many times, could I ever, I mean, I love God, right? We all claim we love God. We'll serve God. We'll do anything for God. Will we do that? Will we sacrifice right. our child? Mm-hmm. You know, literally, I mean, I couldn't even, not even the sacrifice of offering it, you know, the offering part. I don't even know if I can even do that, you know? Right. It's hard. That's a hard one. Mm-hmm. And Abraham did it knowing that God was going to provide. He didn't know what that looked like, but he was right. trusting in him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I think mine is Moses, ladies. Like, really? Yeah, because, like, Moses had an experience with God. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, it was a, it was a sweet relationship. And I don't know, I, I like the fact that he was, I feel like God was just walking along the journey with him. And then I like the fact that um When God knew he was weak, he sent somebody to be there with him to hold up his arms in the fight. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew that he couldn't do it, so he held it up. But he also knew that Moses had flaws about him, but he didn't care that he had those flaws. And if you go back, you know, we all have our flaws, but Moses had flaws from the beginning when he was born, you know. Mm -hmm. And we'll use those to stop us. And we'll list all of them. You know, you know my life is yeah. this. You know my life is this. You know. But he he prevailed on and not even to see it finish. Not even to see the work completed that he was going to pass it on. Like, that had to be hard. Like, I don't want to do Like, I'm not even going to see this. So why am I going to do it? But he kept on. So, I don't know. I just feel like Moses' walk with the Lord was just so sweet and, and intimate like, yeah, give that to me. Yes. So, yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. And so, like, where did he, the holy ground, if you think about it, that's where the holy ground came from. But he told mm-hmm. him, you know, like, you're on holy ground. Like, yeah, I, I'll stand there with you, Lord. I'll stand. I, and yeah. he says, I am the Lord. I got you. The promises, they're yours. So, yeah. So, yes. But thank you for sharing. I uh, love hearing those stories. My next, my next thought was this, um, what I wrote down was that faith takes action, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. And all these, if you think about it, they all took action. Nobody mm-hmm. stood still. Nobody like us, we procrastinate, we won't do it, we hem and ha. But they, it, this, this faith took action, and, and you look at it. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And literally this faith was action. It was based on action and that is us. And God calls us to walk that out in faith. And, and they didn't hesitate. Movement, alignment, they had to be in line with the Lord. Here is Noah. He had to be in alignment with the Lord because he built a whole ark. He built it for animals to come on and to float when the, when the flood came, like that's an alignment. Yeah. So I have this personal question to ask you guys go back in time and, and before Christ time and, and think about when God was calling you and you knew he was calling you and that alignment wasn't there and you kept doing your thing. Anybody want to share where you knew this is literally before you just surrendered, but you knew the Lord, but you kept doing your thing, but you wasn't aligned, but he's asking you to do something. Anybody want to go for it? Well, I can share a little bit, just an experience. I'm not sure if it's where you're going. I just heard of God all my life and mm-hmm. raised, raised as a Catholic, you know, you're taken to church, but not really taught how to read the Bible. So I knew bits and pieces here and there. And I remember a time where I was, before I I was accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, I remember, and I remember vividly. I know God has been watching me this whole entire time. This particular day, I knew the vehicle I was driving had a bad taillight. 
I knew I didn't have a license. I knew I should not have been driving that car. I wasn't under the influence or anything, but I knew those things. And I remember the police stopped me, pulled me over, took the car. Me and my children had to walk. And that moment I made a decision, you know, and I knew God was, I know it was God just speaking to me to take response accountability for my own action, quit blaming other people. And I just started seeking at that point. Mm -hmm. Seeking, Mm -hmm. I didn't, I I wasn't at the point of finding yet, but I was seeking him. And I knew there was something out there that I'm missing. Mm -hmm. Um, But I remember that. So he was covering you even though you were not aligned with him. And you knew he was covering you. Yes, definitely. And I know it was him. I I just know it. I had that peace about it. I just know it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Anybody else? I would say with mine, truly, truly a, um, an encounter was, um, during my second marriage. Um, the whole time I was going to church, checking it off, never really stepped out in faith of, I knew God was calling me, but I was not, I was totally ignoring the call. And it was through my marriage that he got my attention. Mm -hmm. And through my marriage is when I finally said, yes, Lord, I will do what you have called me to do. And since then, um, marriage didn't, um, wasn't restored, but my heart and my soul was restored. So praise the Lord for that. And so now I am doing what he's called me to do is, doing a women's ministry through my, through my devastation of the betrayal. Now I am teaching and helping women to get to a place to fall in love with the Lord. So it was through that, that he got my attention and that I was able to fully surrender to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Candice and Joy, you still thank you? Um, well, I have many I could share, but I'll get into one. Um, it was, um, when I was in my twenties and, um, I was dating someone that wasn't real good for me and, um, you know, things just kept happening and it wasn't working out. Um, and this person was doing things that were, that was illegal. Um, and I could have very easily got caught up. Um, but I, I grew up in the church, was always in church, singing in the choir. Um, so I had that spirit of conviction on me. Um, I knew that what I was doing wasn't right. And I just kept praying and asking God, if this is not what you have for me to remove this person from my life. Mm-hmm. And I knew that the only way that I could break free from this person was for him to really be completely removed from my life. And he ended up going to a federal prison for a number of years. And that's how God made that happen. Wow. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't grow up in the church at all. My understanding of God growing up was very just to be a good person. Like it was very superficial and looking back. Good natured but superficial. But I think it was when I was in college in my twenties because I was, I was hot. I was hot. I was hot shot. I was in pre-med. Um, you couldn't tell me nothing, just scored amazing on my MCATs. Like I was, you couldn't tell me anything. Everything that I wanted was going according to what I wanted, but I wasn't satisfied. And I didn't know that that's what was happening. But even with all the accolades and awards and everything else, it, it did. I wasn't, I was almost bored, but I knew like this, wasn't it even though this is what I wanted and everything was happening according to my plan it wasn't what I wanted because I just didn't have that feeling of like I didn't feel I didn't feel good I wasn't like I didn't feel honor I didn't feel any of those things but it was like no this is what I wanted um and then I got diagnosed with kidney cancer and it put a halt to everything I wanted and I was like what the devil is this what am I supposed to do with this now So I think looking back, that was all God, because here I was diagnosed 
in the very field that I was working in as an undergrad and getting my degree in. So all those words, I understood. Everything they were trying to say made sense to me. So it was like, oh no, I know how to handle this. And I had relationships with the doctors on a practitioner level. So it's just, again, seeing how I didn't know that was God at the time, but looking back, I'm like, oh God, set that up from the get go. Right. So it completely became full circle. But like I said, I can look back on it now and see him calling me, but did I know it at the time? I did it, mm-hmm. you know? And that's cause like I said, I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't have that, that background. So I just thought I'd keep doing what I was going to do and eventually I'd be happy. Yeah. Man. Wow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's God, right? <laughs> it is for real. Just how powerful he is. Um, I think my story when I was, um, when my marriage got kind of shaky, um, I thought I was in control of some things and could make things happen and kind of like bargain with the Lord. But I really wasn't, I wasn't seeking the Lord, put it that way. I've always gone to church Monday through Sunday, Sunday through Monday, whatever day you want. We were in the church and and I knew about God. I'm going to say I know about God and, and I played with him. Um, I was a do gooder Christian. And so here I was, marriage is just falling apart, and and it was like, why me? And I'm praying, and I'm asking the Lord. And it was just, I I, weekends were like horrible. And so Mm -hmm. this particular weekend, I just was like, really, Lord, I I can't do this because you ain't doing nothing, so I got to do what I need to do. And and so I asked my ex-husband to get some alcohol. Um, I didn't drink. I never had drunk before, so I was like, if I'm going to get through this weekend, I need some numb because these weekends are not working out. Just Can we just work and we just stay working and we're good? Weekends was tumultuous. And so um, we discussed it, what what I probably could drink because I can't, I just, alcohol wasn't made for me. And so um, we knew it had to be fruity. So he gets something fruity. I put it in the freezer. And once it gets ready, I'm like, I got to do this now before the weekend starts. And so I probably drunk like this much and I felt it like tingle through my body. And I just remember sitting it down on the floor and um, that's all I remember. And um, the next day, the next day I couldn't lift my head. And I felt like the Lord going, you know what? You're trying to take things in your hands and I'm going to show you. Because I couldn't leave that Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday. I could not get off the couch. I didn't even have a shower. And the kids are just running around. Noise. My head was like, oh wonk, wonk, wonk. And I was like, thank you. And to, from that day to this day, nothing has touched the lips ever again. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Oh, one glass of wine. No. I, that's not for me. And I am good. Like, thank you. The Lord got my attention. But I wanted to... I was taking over. Lord, you're not doing it. I'm not seeing it. You're not moving fast enough. I get it. I'm still I'm still a hot mess express expecting the Lord to bless all this when I'm a hot mess myself. But he really got my attention and like mm. and then a little bit after that I remember I called my dad and I said, um, I don't get these scriptures cuz these quotes at this time now I'm telling him Cause I had this, like, I'd say things to my dad off cuff, like dad, these quotes ain't making it, you know, like you read them, like what, what these quotes doing. And then that's when I was like, I feel like the Lord saying, you don't know me. These, this is not quotes. Cause I would say dad, this is Japanese. Like I'm reading this. This is Japanese. They don't make no sense. <laughs> and uh, literally it was like, I felt like the Holy spirit said, cause you don't know me. That's, that's why that is why it is. And yeah, that, you know, and, and the Lord was out working on our behalf. And not only us in faith is action and movement, but the Lord is moving. Yes. And he's such a right, a God that's right on time. And I love that about all our stories. Like God is a God that was working right on time, no matter what. He was right there in the thick of all of our stuff. Right. Um, and in each one of those stories, you see his movement. Yeah. Like there was a movement. People got moved away. Mm-hmm. situation we got moved out of our own way so the faith and action goes both ways exactly. it's a pendulum to know that he moved as well yeah. being the faithful god that he is mm-hmm. amen yeah yeah definitely 
so much love. You know, you think about like he loved us. Love. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in that movement, we don't see what he's doing, yeah. right? We don't because we're in it. We're we're moving. We're and it's till after when you can sit back and say, you know what? Look how he put these things together mm -hmm. and look what it did for me. And I'm good. You know, I'm at peace about. I mean, did my marriage not work out? It's okay. I mean, he wanted to get, he wanted me. He wanted my heart. He wanted to get my attention. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that. It's because whatever he's doing, we don't see it at the time. We just have to walk in it. And that's where the faith is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Yep. And sometimes it's so challenging to do just that, to walk through it. Um, to go through that process because we want what we want when we mm -hmm. want it. We don't want to be patient and wait on it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so many of us fail to live our lives in king as kingdom heroes, literally, like, you know, because there's times when our Christian walk goes flat. Um, we lack that transformation in our hearts that mm -hmm. is a, a fruit, you know, because it's, it's, it's literally like the fruit of spirit growing from us all combined. But, you know, you think about it, how many times have we failed at, in our lives of living that life of faith in being a kingdom hero, like you said, uh, because if it gets a little stale, we're ready to put it down. Uh, we start questioning God, what is he doing? Uh, in James, James 2, 14 through 17, it says, uh, what use is it, my brother, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If if a brother or sister is without clothing and is in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their bodies, what use, it, what use is that? Even so, faith, it is no work, excuse me, even so faith, if it has no work, is dead, being itself, being by itself. And here James lets us know that how to react in faith by, but by combining what we believe. The work of obedience ignites faithfulness. And in our journey with walking with the Lord, there's been other times where he's called us to walk by faith. Um, there might have been a situation, it might have been marriage, it might have been finances, it might have been medical, it might have been our children. Um, so I want to ask you right now, where was that one of your hard times where we're going, now we're walking with the Lord, where God has had you walk in faith and it's been hard, but you made it over. But like I said, so that you can visibly see the spiritual power enter this place for you like you saw the lord just working and working <laughs> versus back then we went in a line and god still works if you're with me on that question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anybody brave enough to go first go for I'll it go for it. go for it um so that brings me to my transition you know i've been at this same church the same ministry for what nine almost about almost almost 10 years you know, we get comfortable doing ministry, serving the Lord, you know, I, you know what to do already, you know, the Christianese, you know. Um, but then one day the Lord really spoke to my heart about, I need you to move over here now. And I didn't say nothing. I just kept, no, that's the enemy of, a lie of the enemy, you know. And I kept praying about it. Then one night my husband re showed me, he told me, the Lord is showing me that this is our new home now, a new place, a new church home. And I says, you too? <laughs> and he's like, what? And so I shared with him what the Lord's been putting on my heart. He didn't want to tell me because he thought I was so embedded there at this one ministry that I wouldn't move. I said, honey, if the Lord is telling us, we need to do it. We have to be obedient. It's not about comfort. It's about where does he need us? Mm -hmm. Where does he want us? You know, so now then we went into praying about that, and then the Lord showed us, this is where it's at, where I need you at. And so that chapter closed over there, 
And in, the, in that process and interviewing the pastors of that new church that we're eventually now at, um, they're part of my testimony, believe it or not. When I was lost on the streets here in El Cajon, I remember walking up them steps of this church on Mollison and, and Washington, which is now the Shadow Mountain Church. Back then it was New Life. They were the youth pastors at the time at that wow. church. Wow. When I went to open the door to knock, because I knew, like I said, God has been speaking to me. I know he has, but I just didn't know where to go, how to find them. You know, I didn't know. Nobody was teaching me. And so I remember going up the steps. I could feel myself touch that doorknob, but it was locked. And I remember sharing this testimony in the past. Had that door been open, where would I be right now? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously I've been a Christian sooner, but my testimony would have been as powerful, mm. I think. I couldn't reach the people that are reaching now on the streets, you know? Right, right. I, that's what I believe in. Mm -hmm. So right. now I know that these are the same pastor. It's like a full circle. Yeah. Crazy. Full circle. Mm. Yeah. That's how crazy. good God is. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, in the, in the, the favor the Lord has upon us, we've had an opportunity to do outreach there. My husband has the opportunity to minister the word. It's just been a true blessing. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? I would say for me was it's it happened two years ago when I was actually pulled out of my job, a job that I thought I was going to retire in. I was 62 at the time when this all happened. And out of nowhere, my arm, my hand started swelling up my my hand and it was right after COVID. And so I, I was already making in my heart and my plans that I was going to retire in two years. Right. So it was pretty much, okay, let's finish these years. Well, I got sick. My hand started swelling. I, I used to assist with the doctor, but he yanked me out of there really quick. And I've been, I haven't been back and it's been two years that I haven't worked. Um, but what's so awesome about this is that he has provided every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And, and if you all know, disability is only 55 or 60% of your earnings. So it's been cut and then it was cut again and I'm still living the same way. Nothing has been diminished. Lights have been paid. Mortgage has been paid. God has been so faithful. And I believe that when God wants you to walk out of something that you think that you already have ahead and planned out, it's because he's trying to keep you safe. Hmm. He's keeping you safe from seeing or being in an air in an atmosphere that is not good for you. And I really believe that was the case with my the office I was at. So the to see him, I mean, they stripped away my insurance, my health insurance. God gave me better insurance. Now I don't have co-pays. Now I don't even have, I don't pay for nothing. So it's like God knew everything that he was going to do. And you, you know what? I can honestly say that in this transition, in this journey of two years, I haven't worried. I haven't worried about finances because he has handled it. I mean, so like an awesome father. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has taken care of his daughter the whole time. Mm -hmm. So that's my little story that I was removed from something that was very comfortable and very familiar in my life. Thank you. That's good. Sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His sweetness. His sweetness. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Candace and Joy, anybody want to touch that one? <laughs> Go after that one? I can go. Um, 
Just one. I think the one that mm-hmm. popped into my mind when you mentioned it was during COVID, um, when it was at its height. I'm on a lot of different medicines for my kidney. And I may have shared this before, but uh, they pharmacies were, you know, shorted. There was just a lot of things going on with, during the height of COVID. So the medicines that I was getting were not coming from East Coast, New York, because that was when New York pretty much was not moving. It was shut down. So I had to uh, ration out what I had because they didn't know when the prescription was going to be able to be filled. And for some of the ones I take, it doesn't necessarily work that way. They're very uh, uh, time regulated. So you have to take a certain dosage at a certain time, da 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 So I was initially freaking out. I was like, what do you mean it's not going to come? And like, it's not going to work. But how do I get to New York? Like, there was that uh, initial panic because I'm like, I have to have these medicines. This is a, a non negotiable. And I remember calling Teresa. I'm like, what do I do? She's like, I don't know, but we'll start with praying. I'm like, okay, let's, let's start there. And I remember going in my closet and just like, just saying it, like getting out that, that panic. Like, I'm nervous. I don't know what this looks like, God, but, but you do. And I just sat in the closet and I was like, I'm going to just sit here until I'm not nervous anymore. I'm going to just sit here and whether I have to try it out, take a nap, whatever. Long story short, fast forward, I never ended up getting those medicines because they just didn't get chipped. And my levels were amazing the entire time. They never dipped up or down either way. And by the time the shipment was able to come, they ended up taking me off of two of them because I hadn't had them for so long, there was no need to reintroduce them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So it was like, Jesus. But it was in that moment of, yes, I can be honest with God, with everything that I am. And he received me. Like there was, it was like the first time I truly understood there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I was worried. I was afraid. I didn't know what it looked like. And I just said that to him. I didn't have a fancy, I didn't have anything but that emotion of like, God, I need you. Because right now this doesn't feel good and I'm I'm nervous. I'm afraid. And to know that he received me as I was and then, like, come on. You know, and it's like we truly get to come to him as we are. And he he knows. He knew I was afraid before I said I was afraid. Mm -hmm. But just that freedom and being like, man, my father hears me. He really does. And it's okay that I doesn't make me any less of a Christian. Does it mean my faith was as cute? Matter of fact, I feel like I pressed more into my faith then because I was honest. I was honest and being like, I'm nervous. I'm worried. I need you, God. And 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 until this day, this is what, 2023, I still haven't been back on those two medicines. We just awesome. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. That's great. Yeah. Joy, That's you want to awesome. go for it? I will. Um I will share, um, it was when my son was in college and he was in his um, second year, um, get ready to finish up. And he he was struggling in school and he was already at that point, he was on academic probation. So he had one more semester to get it right. And really, you know, we tried everything, you know, working with him to make sure that he could stay in and. He, he really was putting forth effort and he called me and he said, mom, he said, I've got some bad news. He said, I'm not going to be able to return to college next semester because his GPA wasn't high enough. And I immediately fell apart because raising him as a single parent, um, you know, getting him to college, um, getting him to that point, I'm like, you know, we did all of this and, and this happens. Um, and at the time, um, I was married by that time and I told my husband what was going on and he said, you know, don't fall apart. He said, let's pray about it. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. It's over. It's done. Um, His GPA is what it is. He said, no, we're going to pray about it. In the meantime, we prayed. He prayed with me. I'm looking up trade schools and different things he could do um, because I don't want him to be a statistic. I don't want him to get out here and do the wrong thing. Um, To make a long story short, The very next day, he called me. He said, Mom, he said, I've got good news. He said, my professor, one of the professors miscalculated his GPA, 
And by a tenth of a point, he was able to stay in college and return that next semester. And I know that was nothing but God. Um, Fast forward, he graduated on time from college. He is gainfully employed and doing well, but I know that it was nothing but God. Did you say a tenth of a point? Tenth of a point. And I was like, when God does it, like, you know know it was him. Like you said, there was no other, a tenth of a point could only be like, I'll never, forget it. I'll never forget it. Woo! No, oh, no. So good. I ain't gonna never so forget good. it. I'm not gonna forget none of y'all stories. I'm just over here. I'm the crybaby. I just wanna <laughs> cry, but I'm like, oh Lord. If I start, it'd be all a mess. Oh, like oh, That's Jesus. So awesome. That is. Thank God is God. Mm-hmm. So good. So I remember um uh there was this season on it where I was out of work for a while. And I live with a family and I didn't understand why I was there. And then God gave me the revelation. It wasn't about me. It was, it was for them. And so when that season stopped, we moved in with another family and I had gone through my home being broken in where I couldn't sleep at night because it had been broken into. And God took me to this place. And it was with Sharon and Jeff, and they were members at church. And it was out in the country, and we'd all fall asleep. They would go, they would travel, so that was kind of why we were there, and they had a dog. And it was like, uh, it was like a place in heaven. Because I hadn't slept in probably two years, honestly. Probably why I don't sleep now, but I just didn't have that peace to sleep. Um, Because the house had gotten broken into, and... um, so we would fall asleep literally with the door unlocked. All all of us, all Sharon and Jeff and the kids, we just fall asleep like we were just at a piece. And in the morning, there was road runners that I had never seen a road runner before. And I'm like, Jeff, what is that that bird? It's just like you know, it literally was a road runner in Lakeside. And then um, owls at night, and I could sleep. I could sleep. And so they had to sell their home, and so we got ready to move. I didn't have a job and um, I had some money coming in and I didn't know where I was going to stand. In my mind, all I vision was it's, it's on the street. I'm going to be pushing the shopping cart. We're going to be living out of our car because in, in San Diego, you can live out of your car. You know, uh, they got parking lots for you to live in your car. And I just mm-hmm. kept in, that's going to be, that's going to be us and what that's going to look like. And so the kids are probably going to live with their dad. And so we were looking for a place, and um, I remember my son saying, let's go to this one. I was like, I don't want to go to that one. I don't want to go, and I'm driving around, and he had fell asleep because I'm looking at all these places. And um, I pull over, and I just cry like, Lord, what do you want? What do you want me to do? Like, I don't know what to do. I just I trust you. And so he wakes back up, and he says, Mom, are you ever going to go check out that place? I'm like, I don't want to live there. You know, I was like, I don't want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I come, I go back to Spring Valley. I walk in. No one getting well. I literally had $100 in, to my name. I walk in, and she says, we have a $99 special to move in. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. what's the catch? You know it's a catch. You know, like, what's the catch? 99 and what else? And she said, right. um, mm-hmm. she said $99 to move in. That's that's the uh, move in. There's no deposit or anything. And I was like, okay. So I filled out the application. And again, I don't really have a job. Like I didn't have that job or a check stub to stay. I just had the income that was coming in. So I filled it out and I said, I got to go to 7-Eleven because my bank might ask me $10 for a money order or cashier's mm-hmm. check. So I'm not going there. And I don't have that. And they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. So I'm going to 7-Eleven and do this. Get the money order. It's 75 cent. Money order's 99. I got 25 cent left in my bank account. So I go, turn the application, you know, take that breath. Fast forward, she calls me back and I'm like, okay, here we go. Here we go. We already know what she's going to say. 
And she said, I have uh, good news and bad news. And so she said, which one you want first? And I said, just give me the bad news. You know, she was like, why do people say that? And she said, the bad news is that um, you're going to have to move in this weekend. And I was like, no, tell me the bad news. She said, that is, you're going to spend the weekend moving in. And I was like, <laughs> so I got it? And she said, yes, the good news is you got it. You've been approved. And I'm like, nice. it was only God. It was only yeah, God because yeah. I had wow. no money for one. Two, I still didn't have no money. Um, but it was only God. Just, I just, you know, how good he is. That, that, that tenth, <laughs> you know, that just uh-huh. in the middle of that just how good he is and god is good yes. we walk by faith not by sight amen because we don't know we don't know what that's going to be we can cry mm-hmm. out to the lord we can go in our closet and cry out we can get together and we can pray we can what would our story have been if we hadn't walked it out by faith like god was amen. in the midst of it and that brings me to that next question of um, your relationship literally with between faith and fear. And this is where I want Candace to come in. Um, you shared one morning on our live where we come in the morning about faith and fear coexisting together. Can you do that part again? I love it when she asked me to talk science. It's my favorite. <laughs> so <laughs> our brains, uh-oh, that is a genius. But the way our brains are mapped certain emotions elicit at certain times. So when we're afraid, you have, you know, this gland lights up, this side of the brain, all these different things. But when you are truly in that posture of, whether it be faith, worship, praying, any of those aspects, a certain part of your brain lights up. But what happens is it negates the part of the brain that lights up with fear. So truly in our bodies, the way we were designed you cannot have faith and fear at the same time. If you are f- afraid, the faith piece, the worship piece, the reverence of God, it's almost like it just never switches on. But the opposite is true. So in those moments where you find your, you know, if we have that moment, like I was sharing that panic, immediately going to prayer, going to worship, singing a worship song, whatever, reading a scripture, it turns on that part of your brain and the other one never switches on. Amen. And I just think that's so awesome. Literally, the mm-hmm. fact that, you know, the relationship of faith and fear that we one time really walked in fear. You know, we walked in fear and comfortable about walking in fear. And now we can walk in faith because we've seen what the Lord does for us. Um, tell me something. Uh, my next question is, who do you call on when you need prayer during those times or that that person that um, that helps you grow in your faith? Who is that for you? Because I do. I feel like you have to have the, the people around you. Uh, he's called us to spur each other on, and, and I just feel like that has been such a pivot in my life is having – who God uses in your life to, to cover yeah. you. So who are those people that you can call on? And also, I do believe this. I, I just don't ask anybody to pray for me, honestly. Um, I just don't I just don't ask anybody because I don't know what you're praying. And uh, we have this thing about praying hands. Like, what does that mean? You know, like somebody says, like, especially on Facebook, they say, um, you know, pray for me. And, and everybody throws up hands. What does that mean? Like, just say a prayer. Like, I pray for you or something. Just don't throw the emoji out there because we know what emojis. They're just emoji and we're gone about our way. Right. All right. So back to the question. Who do you call on to pray? And what's your thoughts about what I said about prayer and having someone to pray for you? I agree. I'm go ahead, Joey. Joey, go. Um, I agree. I don't want just anybody praying for me. Um, my go-to people, of course, is my husband and my mother. Mm -hmm. I know that both of them can get a prayer through. I know they're (laughs) sincere. I know they don't have any um, ill intention toward me. Um, So yeah, they're definitely my go-to people. That's awesome. Yeah. I have um, a couple of ladies from Girl Talk Ministries that I go to that I text individually. And then I also, my husband, depending upon what the prayer is, um, because of his health, I don't like to overwhelm him. So I keep the stressors out. 
Um, so I just don't bother him with those things. Um, but then I also have a core group in my Bible study that we have, um, that they are prayer warriors. So I know I can trust in them. I agree with just what Teresa said and Joy backed up. I don't like just anybody praying. I had an incident like that once and I did not like it. And I rebuked it right then and there. And I stopped it. And she was trying. No, 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 don't stop. I rebuke it right now. In Jesus' name, don't touch me. That's it. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say with me, um, I would say Teresa. I would say Candace, yeah. Victoria. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's very true. I don't let anybody pray for me either. I mean, I'm very, very, um, it's a very sensitive thing, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't know that if everybody is for you. I mean, you don't. There can be envy. There can be jealousy behind every prayer. And it's, I mean, yeah. So um, it's not many, but the ones that do, I know they're mighty warriors. So, yeah. I echo everything everybody has said there. It's a, I think not only is, not only is it about that person having good intentions towards you, I think it's just that discernment piece that he offers us. Mm -hmm. Like Elsa was saying, not everybody is meant to do everything at that time, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to, cause prayer has to have a level of honesty and it has to have a level of like comfortable. You have to be vulnerable when you ask someone to pray for you, because granted you may not need to share the details, but I think there's a different level and you can share the details yeah. and you can say, this is what I'm going through. This is what's up. And then to have that sister friend or that person, I'm going to say it, they need to challenge you a little bit. <clears throat> Therese is the one for me and she'll straight out tell me, you're not going to like what I have to say <laughs> and she'll push it, you know, to cause me to think, what is the root of my emotion? What is going on? And to give me that truth and love that sometimes the problem is me right. and that I need to realize that. But it, it's because it, it's not just prayer as far as petition goes, it's prayer of growth and transformation and reading the scripture, interceding, like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing, it's a big thing. So right. to be able to have right. those people that you can do that with, like I have my sister friends from at the table, like I'm like, pray for Mia and I know like, it makes me emotional just because that's my girl. But I know that these women care about her. I know they do. I know that they have a love for my child. So when I ask them to pray for her, they go in like they pray for their own children. You know, and that is like, I thank God every day for that because that is, not everybody has that. So it's so much more than just asking for something. Like you really get to get to the heart of yourself and the people so it's yes yes <laughs> yeah yeah it's those sister friends at the table candace and elsa um and i you know ditto I, I love what you guys said and you know i don't i don't we don't put the value in prayer that what prayer is like it's a conversation with the Lord and that person is going in for you. Like Joey said, no ill will. Like I know they're going in for mm -hmm. on my behalf. And you know they're going in for your behalf. They're fighting the battle for you. They've taken on the battle and they're fighting it for you with the Lord and to cover you. And and I like to those who are listening, get you some prayer warriors that you know is praying for you, that's covering you, that it's lifting you up and have your best interest and yeah. your growth in the Lord, your walk in, in your faith. Like they're covering you. They're covering yeah. you. Yeah. And and this a gift. It is a gift from God that we can communicate with him and, and that the Holy Spirit, even in my groaning, if I don't have words, even for a sister friend, that that God, the Holy Spirit is gonna intercede and speak on, you know, like I got him. So yeah. I just pray that we stop looking at prayer is a simple thing that we're going to throw hands up because it's not that it is not, mm -hmm. it's understanding that we stand on promises we standing on the holy right. ground Seven. when i pray i'm standing on holy ground and i know that our heavenly father 
hears and he's going to speak in a mighty way. Hallelujah. That's it's right. It's going to be victory. Um, I just want to respect your time because Joey is, is East Coast and it's 720 here and it's 1020 there. Are you, how are you doing? Doing good. I got a little bit left in me. Okay. Doing good. Okay. So I want to ask you this, ladies. Uh, the next question is, what's that, what is that Bible verse that helps you remain focused? Do you have one that we can share with the others? And ladies, if you're listening out there, grab your pen and pencil. You've heard these Hall of Faithers and they do have a word that they stick with. And if you could add it to your list of God's word to you, take it back. All right. Who's got a passage that they go to? Yes, Gloria. Okay, mine is Isaiah forty-one ten. Mm-hmm. Amen. And do you want me to read it or yes, just say you, it? You can read it to us. Okay. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. 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 That's mine. Mm-hmm. Next. I'll share. <laughs> Next. I have a, I will just pick one. Um, <laughs> Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Mm-hmm. For plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Mm-hmm. Amen. And Elsa says amen because that's what yes, I'm saying. Yes, I sure do. <laughs> you know it. Yes. <laughs> That's one of my favorites, Joe, Joey. Um, but my favorite has been Psalms 121. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll do one and two. I, it says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Candace? Um, right, Joey, only picking one is so hard, but (laughs) so, so hard. But I'm going to say probably Matthew 25, 35 to 36 is the one that resonates to my heart, just knowing who he is. And it says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. And when I was in prison, you came to visit me. Just knowing that he just covers it all and he gives us such a great example of how to love love people where they are not where you want them to be mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. um i love isaiah 9 6 and again i have a lot but that's the one that really resonates with me and it says for us a child is born to us a son is given the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father and Prince of Peace. What more do you need? Jesus. Come on, come on. Ah, mm, Just covered it all. Yes, yes, yes. So good, so, so good. Um, um, I wanted, uh, before, I I had a a moment when we were talking about um, God's covering, and we all have children right here. And, Mm -hmm. um, we all have children that need to be covered. Yeah. Um, and uh, Candace, if you'll take this time right now, and, and someone out listening on the podcast probably have a child too, can you take this time to pray for the children that are represented? Um, so you may have one or two or three kids, but we want to pray for all of them. But if you have one that just needs that special covering right now, yes, will you call out their name? Yeah. And Candace, will you take us to the throne? Abby, please. Hold on, hold on, Candice. Hold on one second. Um, Gloria's gonna tell. We're gonna tell the names first. Go ahead, Gloria. Okay, Abby, Abby, my Abby, please. Mm-hmm. Say, John. Bye. I'm sorry, Joey. You go ahead, Elsa. John, John. Say, Vaughn. Candace is a writer. She writes everything. Yes. Down. Sorry, I was I was writing. <laughs> she doodles everything. Awkward pause. <laughs> Mine is chance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you know what it is to have the heart of a parent. 
you know what it is to have the love of a child, a child that you have dreams for, that you have hopes for, that you want to instill the very best in. And right now, Father God, we lift up our children to you, the children that are represented here. We lift up Abby to you. We lift up John John to you. We lift up Savon to you. We lift up Chance to you. And we lift up Mia to you. And for all of our sister and brother friends that are listening right now, we lift up their children to you, Father. You love them. Yes. You have blessed our lives with their very life. And we thank you and we honor you for that. The amount that we love them can't even come close to what you do. And just as we have shared verses about having a plan and a purpose and knowing that a savior was born and understanding that we don't have to have fear, that same goes for our children. And again, we thank you for their very lives. Mm -hmm. So in this moment, all of the children that are represented here, all of the children of the sisters and brother friends who are listening, we surrender them back to you. Not as mm -hmm. a sign of we can't, but as a sign of knowing that like, you can. You love them. You have instilled in them purposes, talents, treasures, and gifts. And we will to call that out. So we pray that during whatever season that they, each of them are walking through, we speak into them what you put into them. Mm -hmm. That they know at home, from their moms, from their earthly moms, that we are going to speak promises and declarations over their lives. We're going to tell them that you are loved. We're going to tell them that they are enough, that they are valued, that they have a plan and a purpose in this life that only that they can fulfill. So we pray for the friendships that surround them, no matter their ages, it doesn't matter. We pray for the, the relationships that they enter. We pray that they speak over themselves lovingly, that when they look into the mirror, they see what you have said, what we have spoken. We understand the gift of their lives that you've given us. May we treasure that and continue to remind them that they are scientists, doctors, lawyers, engineers. They are healed. There's no mental illness. There's no addiction that they can continue in the life that you have set out for them. That yes, you, God of God, King of Kings knows what it's like to be a parent, that you loved us so much that you gave your only son for us, that we can give our children back to you because we trust you. Because we trust that what you have for them is great. We trust that what you have for them is, is whole, is healed, is reconciled, is redeemed, is restored. For that son or daughter that needs to come on home, may they know in their heart that the door is always open, that the door is never closed because we love them in the moment as they are. And we are just gonna speak life if there's an I'm sorry that needs to happen, let it happen. If there's an I love you that needs to be said, let it be said. Because what's happening in this life is temporal. And we are speaking into our eternity. And we want our children to know you, to have a relationship with you, to see themselves the way you see them. So we thank you for their lives. We thank you for the generation of who they're going to affect, the legacies mm -hmm. that they're going to leave, how they see us pray. May they continue to see us come together. May they continue to see us read our work, knowing that we're never going to stop. As long as there's breath in each one of our lungs, we are never going to just stop declaring the goodness over their lives. As long as there's breath in our lungs, we, lungs, we will never stop praising you for giving them to us. So all of them, John, John, Saban, Chance, Mia, and all the other children from the babies to the adults, we love them. We love them and we thank you for them. We thank you for them. We thank you for giving them to us. We thank you that you have entrusted us with your children while we're on this earth. We speak goodness over their life. We speak value over their hearts and may you guard them and protect them. Father, we love you and we declare this in your name, amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. When you pray for your kids. Oh, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> mm. Amen. Such, mm, mama, being a mama makes you have such a tender heart when it comes to them. I, you know, mm. when you think about how much you love your child and you want the best for them and, and to think God wants that same thing for us. For us. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, so as we wrap it up, tell me who in your life, whether they're alive or um, they're deceased, would you call a hall of faith or in your journey in this walk with Christ? 
who is someone you can call a hall of faith alive or they have passed on i would i'm sorry joey go ahead definitely my mother she is she's yeah. so sweet and jet the sweet i like y'all we're talking honey she is <laughs> such a sweet woman so sweet but go ahead yes she um even now she'll she'll reach out and she'll send me a text you know real early in the morning just to you know let me know that god is still in control not even knowing about my day what i may face um she starts off my day that way um i just love her to this she's just everything to me yeah. Yeah, man. mine was my ex my kids mother i mean sorry my kids' grandmother she's my ex-mother-in-law Mm -hmm. And um, she had always prayed for me. And I didn't understand what prayer was. And I would mock her, actually, but through all these years. And now I thank her for all that because I watched that. You mm -hmm. know, I didn't have a, a model for that. So she, she modeled that for me. So I am just so blessed to have her in my life. And just to have her, um, just to have that connection with her with that. You mm -hmm. know, even with our worlds apart that we're divorced now. It's, we have a great relationship. It's, be, it's beautiful. Amen. Um, for me, I would say the families that were on that block where we used to play, those are my Hall of Famers because they used to pray for me when I was playing and I was reckless running crazy in that little street. I was young. And so I those are my prayer um warriors that were praying for me while I was out there playing on the street. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, mine would be my mom. I mean, like I said, I didn't grow up in the church. It wasn't something that was talked about, but I found a Bible that she had that belonged to her mom. And in it, there were prayers written like with my name on it. And there were certain scriptures that she'd write the date and write like mine and my brother's names. I was like, what? why are you tell me about this? This is so cool. Um, so as an adult and as I've my own walk, we share that with each other now. So it didn't happen when I was younger, but it's happening now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. that's where you got that from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even know it. I didn't even know it at the time. <laughs> yes. Um, I would say mine is my dad because like he was just a prayer where he prayed all the time. And I know we went into church, he prayed. When we left out of church, he prayed. When we uh, drove home, he prayed. Like he was just that prayer warrior. So yes, definitely a hall of faith. And, and to see the things that he went through. And he had this uh, Bible. Uh, it was our family Bible. It was in the living room. And he would go in there. I don't know why he would use that. He, has, he had another Bible, which I have. Um, that it's all written in his scribbly handwriting, can't read it. Um, but um, he would go to the family Bible, and it was, it was big, it's a big Bible. And uh, whatever he was praying for, it could have been a bill, it could have been a situation, and he would take whatever that was, and he would pray, and he put it in the Bible. And nosy me, I go back to the Bible <laughs> and check out <laughs> What's he praying for? <laughs> um, but that was how he did. He would pray with that, sit in there, because he'd get quiet, he'd go pray. That was like his special throne room, and he'd put it in there and pray for it or whatever. But, yeah, that's my hall of faith -er. So, yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, next question is this. Um, do you trust God for the future? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I have to have him. So think of that situation right now um, that you that you feel like it's a trial, it's hard, um, and you can't see it. Can't see it. You know it's there. And just tell it, God's got it now. Because we trust him. Amen. We don't know yeah. what it's looked like, and it's out of our control. We've walked it before. It's going to be no different. It's just gonna get sweeter. Amen. It's gonna get sweeter. Um, I think that's a wrap. That's a wrap. So good. Thank you, it was. so much. Whew, so good. 
I love hearing testimonies. Just mm-hmm. I grew up with testimonies and we'd have a testimony time in church. It was it was kind of funny. Um, Joey grew up in the same type of church I grew up. It was hilarious because it would be the older people telling testimonies and they would tell them and they'd go, oh, but it's, it's just, you know, and to think that I grow up and want to hear testimonies now because then it was like, oh, God, here, here go Uncle somebody, like, oh, you know, but to understand what testimonies are and for us to testify of God's goodness. So I... So thank you guys for joining me today. I and I know that someone's gonna be blessed by your your stories and your testimonies that God has God has worked in your life. And um I wanna thank everybody again for listening in. Um again, if you have a question or comment, please reach out, use the email. We love to hear from you, even if you're on YouTube, all platforms. Uh remember share the story, share the stories. Um of God's blessing and God's goodness because God is good. He's so merciful. And um, it's not about how big your faith is. It is about how big our God is. And you charted through five amazing stories of how big our God has been for a long time. You add up our time of living, how good God is and all generations right here. So again, thank you, Elsa. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Gloria and Candace. Thank you. You have no idea how you bless me. So thank you so much. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you for having us. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And thank God you for sharing you your story. Candace will pray us out one more time, and then we're going to go. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you. What an amazing God you are that you knew that tonight was going to happen, that this was going to be an opportunity for five of your daughters to come together to talk about your goodness. And I think the prayer is just in that. It's not about the size by quantity of our faith, but it is how big that you are, that you overcome everything, that we can literally look at that mountain and say, but you don't know about my God. You just don't know. So we are exuberant. We are filled with joy. I have been so encouraged to hear the work in, in others' lives. Like, Yes, Jesus. How can you not be excited to know that you have brought healing? You have brought restoration. You went down to the tent that you knew of what had to happen. That that is such an encouragement to who we are and that we can now take that and share. So for that sister friend out there who thinks she doesn't have a story, yes, you do. You absolutely have a story and we want to hear it. We want to know. It is meant to be told. So I pray that sister and brother friends are just as excited as we are and that we just keep it going. But be, to be in the hall of faith there is to, to want others mm-hmm. to join you, to want to wanna be able to share and, and conduct ourselves in a way that our lives are lived in the evidence of our faith. So we love you. I pray a hedge of protection over my sister friends as they sleep tonight, knowing that you are good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Thank you. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to A Cup of Soul. Blessings. Until next time.